Um, go give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. We have many on our prayer list, even within our church family, immediate families. We have a lot to pray for and um, prayer works. Prayer works. So uh, let's, let's do that. Uh, let's uh, go be, look at our uh, agenda for tonight. Um, we have um, been looking, I have this verse in Matthews that we've been reciting and we are ready to recite it without even showing it, right? Oh, we showing it up. Oh. Go ahead and show it. How many has it? Have it in their memory already? Okay, silence. All right, so let's recite. Who was that? I said we should have it. We've been breaking it down. Been breaking it down. Been pulling it. In, in her class, she even brings out little words during her teaching about some of the ingredients or words within this passage of scripture. But let's let's read it together again so that we can uh, we have what's the date of 27, 22nd, 30 days have September. How many 30 days in this month? Oh, we got to move. We got to move on. So we have to get this in our hearts and our minds so that we continue to show the unity that uh, faith, hope and charity has as we go through. So let's recite it together, everyone. Shall we begin? Jesus, Jesus said, said love, 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 love the Lord your God, God with, with all, all your passion, passion and, and prayer and intelligence. And intelligence. This, this is, is the, the most, most important, important first, the first on any list. list. But there is, is a second, second to set to set alongside, alongside it. it. Love, love others, others as, well as well as you love, love yourself. yourself. These two commandments are pegs. Everything, everything in God's law. And, and, and the prophets, prophets hang from them. them. Some of the things in God's law. Everything. All right. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. So powerful passage of scripture. Uh, you can go back and look at it if you're familiar with it and probably more so in King James Version, but uh, definitely it, uh, it gives you a different twist to it and uh, letting us know the importance of uh, these commands that he gives us. Uh, so let's do that. All right. We have been um, speaking or teaching or talking um, from uh, living the good life. And uh, just to give uh, some background again, how I even came up with this, it, uh, it was uh, just a thought on, um, before we even get started, <laughs> Minister Morant, if you may, if you can, there was a question or, that you presented in our Sunday school. Uh, you threw it out there and asked uh, us what did we think and it dealt with, uh, I don't want to misquote, but um, how, if we could uh, really, if I say, I look at it this way, see the end or of things that are going on and, and uh, promises that we might have. I'm, I'm probably phrasing it wrong. Do you remember that? question that you're about the worldview the worldview yeah how did you phrase that um actually do anybody feel they have a good understanding of worldview okay um, uh-huh go ahead is that it was it it yeah yeah we oh, just... and and there were different uh viewpoints mm -hmm. from a uh, few on, on that and it that was a powerful stage statement and and i really um <laughs> I start. I would have brain overload if I could even get to an inch of it, you know, of what the worldview. But it uh, it was so powerful, and, and it goes back. And and I'll, I'm tying it to this this subject to have a living the good life. There is so much involved in us, or 
there are things that we need to, to ensure as we walk through this life, what we must do to, to live this good life and what does the good life really mean? What, what is it telling us? Uh, the views of the world, they see it totally different. And we went through those last week as well when we went through uh, the uh, summary of where we were on the first five. And tonight we are looking at uh, another verse in John. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move to slide 10 instead of going through all the um, different ones. Um, so here's, here's, here's our scripture for tonight that we're going to um, glean from. Uh, it's John 11 verses three and four. And it reads, therefore his sister sent unto him saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified thereby. That is going to be the springboard for our discussion tonight. Um, and um, powerful, we know the scripture, you know, the, the, the history, the lessons behind that, the relationship that Jesus had with this family and uh, how he um, was, a, they were a blessing to him as he traveled. You, you knew that uh, Jesus throughout his life, as he traveled around preaching the gospel, many did not like him. Many had issues with him. Even his family on occasion had to go get him, try to bring him in so that people wouldn't harm him. But this family always showed love. These sisters and the brother always showed him love. So there was a love. So that ties back to even our scripture for the month, but it dealt with how much he, he cared for them. So the sisters in that light, knowing the relationship, and we always talk about how important the relationships are, that they felt comfortable to even go to Jesus, even as he was working, even as he was evangelizing, to tell him to pause or, or even present to him that you have some, your brother is sick. And they sent the word and look what he tells them. He says, this sickness is not unto death. That is a powerful statement right there. But for the glory of God, the son of God might be glorified thereby. This sickness is not unto death. This good life that we live, you have to really uh, take this to heart that God has given us promises. Now, when he gives us a promise, what are you going to do with it? What is the attitude, the mindset that you have as you look at this, the, uh, the life that you have, this worldview, this national view, this all those things that, uh, that we live through, how that we can look at God when he makes us a promise. And we always bring back a, a little simple uh, statement or parable, however how you want to put it, that uh, Elder, uh, District Elder Plummer gave us, that when God makes you a promise, just hold him to it. That takes faith. That takes a lot. But this sickness is not unto death. If you were someone to tell, tell you that, let's put yourself in the uh, shoes of uh, the sisters here as their brother is uh, pain. And he gives you that, that scripture or that, those words right there. How would you view that? How would you think that's your brother? What would you be thinking? Y'all know the end of the book. That's what you said, Minister Moran, when you mm -hmm. said it. Y'all know, know the end of the story. But now mm -hmm. erase the end. I'm telling you, go back to the, the middle of the chapter. How would, mm -hmm. you, how would you be thinking right there? Your brother is sick. Your brother is dying. And now uh, this, this, this one that you've reached out to, this one that, that you uh, have watched and seen do all these great things and allowed to come into your house, he tells you that this sickness is not unto death. Where is your mindset? He's going to be healed. He's not going to die. I would think. Okay. Anybody else? I do the same way. You feel the same way. Now, as you read down and you mm -hmm. find... Now, because the plot <laughs> thickens, right? The, the book opens up. And so now this sickness is not unto death, but now it has happened. Death has yeah. set in. Now, what are you thinking? What did he mean? 
nine unto death. I mean, I'd be a little confused. <laughs> It, it would put you in a quandary. It'll put you in a mind. What are you talking about? If, and, and keep reading, it goes on. If you had been here, mm -hmm. oh Lord, if, yeah. if you had been, where is your mind now? So living this good life, it, it, <coughs> you have to hold, God made a promise at the beginning that when he said, this sickness is not unto death. That was the promise. Now, how do you live through it? How do you wait for that promise? How do you see yourself journeying uh, to your promise? Because the, the promise is given, but there is a process. You don't get to the end of the promise. You have to have that faith and that hope to get there. And at, during that, that journey, many things go through your mind. Many things go through, and you can either fall off the cliff or you can pray and hold on having that word that we always talk about, that hope, having only positive expectations as you go through this journey. But let's, let's, let's look at this a little bit more as we talk about this. So in my next slide, let's... I'm Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Before you go on, I was looking at the structure of the sentence and it has that but there. Uh -huh. and generally they said when it has a but, it wipes away anything in front of it. All right. So it's uh -huh. like he... Yeah, mm -hmm. he said the sickness and the not on the death, but then he put that butt. And then he brought himself into it that the son of God might be glorified. So like it's not really about your brother. It's right. really about the son of God. Not the son of God. But again, here we let's I'm putting you the human part on you now. That as mm -hmm. as you looked at the story, because this now is real life. She had happened. You saw it and you went down. You forgot all about that butt butt part right. <laughs> right. You, you were uh, the sisters I, i'm not saying so much of us but the, we are examples of them uh, mm -hmm. each one of us they then have forgot all about all all the teachings all the good days that they were he was in their house and how they enjoyed him being there they all that stuff is out of the window because mm -hmm. if you had been there because there was another but if you were mm -hmm. there <laughs> he wouldn't be in we wouldn't be having this conversation we wouldn't be in this position, but mm -hmm. you're there. So, um, uh, also, it showed not faith on their behalf because they said if 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 he was there, if they had much faith that he wouldn't die, then they should have had that same faith. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they, if Jesus, if God told me you were sick and he told me you weren't going to die, I would trust that. I would like, you ain't going to die. Don't worry about it. You're not going to die. He done told me you're not going to die <laughs> until you die. <laughs> <laughs> until you die. Um, it, it, it is. It's, but again, so we look at the first there. There is a, a promise that he's making to us. And he's giving them what the, uh, the he, he's really defining or helping us with this, this death piece of it, because he's putting it all, he says, this is done for the glory of God. Now, what God does, uh, this is going back to you, if, if we could even visualize what that meant, but the glory of God, what is God's glory? What, what is, what would he do to bring about glory for others to see it and how to advance the evangelism, people seeing the power of him. Because remember, during this part of his ministry, he was gathering people, bringing them to a point where they really understood because he was going to be leaving. Uh, Jesus was. And so, but he was getting the, the disciples or the people together, uh, sharing this great gospel of Jesus Christ with them, that the son of God might be glorified thereby, that they will understand they was going to see, to me, they were going to be seeing some miracles happen, some things that were going to be changing in their lives if they would just hold on. Uh, God was doing it for, don't look at the death, but look, watch what God does with the death. Watch what he does with it. Any, but anyone else, go ahead. Pastor, who was um, who was Jesus speaking with when he answered? Because it says they sent the sisters sent um, for him, sent a message to him. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say he responded to them. He he wasn't even in the city. 
he hadn't left yet to go there. So who, I want to know, well, I'm wondering <laughs> when he made that statement about this, the sickness isn't into death, but who was he talking to? Well, he's, he's talking to who they sent, but look what the message is going to go back to them. Let's see. Let's read it. Let's go back to the first verse, mm -hmm. 11. Now, a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and the sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with anoint ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that he he said, when he heard that, he said, this sickness. So someone brought it to him. It didn't say Mary and Martha brought it to him, but it, it, it was the information that they had let them, let, telling him, because Jesus was again out evangelizing. He was out working. They didn't go out. They were there with their brother, but they sent for the, the word went out that we need Jesus here. And just tell them, just like I, you can send something. They know the people of that city knew that Jesus had a bond with this family. All you got to do is take my name to them, tell them that something's wrong in my household. That I, I've been breaking it down really low, but that, that's the viewpoint that I take. And that should have been enough as per as Mary and the sisters there that, uh, that would bring him back or bring him to the house to tend to their brother. They even narrowed it down, brother not here, but in their own mind, your brother is sick and bring him in. So I guess to your question, no, it wasn't directly to them, but just like this message, they sent unto him a word. We don't know exactly other than we said here that he's sick. It was probably more verbiage that they gave too, but it reached Jesus that he knew Well, he was sending a message back Letting them know that tell them, this sickness is not done. Say it like that, but that's where I'm receiving it. But anyone else? No, and I like the way the um the ones that brought it to him called him like he who you love. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, even they understood that relationship that he had with them, the ones that she sent to him, and he still responded the same way and i guess you're going to the next verse and he still waited <laughs> two more days mm -hmm. uh, did that help elder i mean did you or you is help me uh I, no that 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 helped i was i i was um asking that because we uh, you know previously we were saying well well i no let me say it like this i had always thought from I read into the scripture that that he was speaking to them directly, directly to them, and 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 didn't make the connection that he hadn't even left. You know, I knew he hadn't left to go to Bethany yet, so he couldn't have been talking to them. But you you helped me with yes, there was some a messenger, um, and it was well known as Minister Morant was just saying it was well known throughout the community. Of the relationship with Jesus and this particular family, because even the way the messenger phrased what they said was that your your brother, you know, um, or the one that you love, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so no, that helps. That helps. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other any other comments, questions? So if if we if we're if Mary and well let's let's say if the family are, are looking for the promise of, of this sickness not being unto death, there are some principles, promise principles that we're going to talk a little bit about. That's, that's where we're going to be going a little bit because this is living a good life. There are some principles. God has made promises to all of us. And there are some principles that we have to really <laughs> understand as we walk, take this walk, that God's timing is different than ours. That's what we're seeing in that particular passage or, or this, this whole chapter or the chapter and the verses that deal with uh, Lazarus and, and his family that John 11 and 16 and we he had heard therefore that he was sick he abode as we talked about two days still in the same place where he was wow was it important to him 
and he abode it there for two more days. Here we go. Come out of your uh, your knowing the end of the story. And if you saw this happening and you had sent for him and he's how is your attitude now? How is your mindset at this juncture? Okay, none of us had need of him immediately. We all, we were. Yeah. Big- <laughs> and I want him right then. And my grandmother used to always say, you can't hurry God. <laughs> can't hurry him. Mm-hmm. Because his clock is totally different. That's yeah. Sister Millie would always say, yeah. Talk about God's timing is not our timing. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. that is one of the hardest things for, for us people to really take. We, we want instant stuff. Look in life. We, you know, we always joke about McDonald's is now slower than ever. You want a quick meal and you got to go stand. They tell you, you got, now they even have extra parking spots for you to go pull up and wait. You put your order in and go to number four and sit out there in your car and we'll get it to you. This this had nothing to do with COVID. This was the way they were operating. Their lines were so, so it's not a quick fix. You have to wait. But our timing, look, God can do things anytime. He could have done it. He could, yeah, he could speak the word. He could do it right then and there. But he said this was for God's glory. And for the people, they were going to see a miracle. They were going to see something through the son of God that they had probably, some of them had never experienced. This was all for the glory of God. When God does that, it's for his glory. He's not trying to pull no rabbit out of no hat, none of that stuff. God Mm -hmm. does things. So he was in his own way, knowing that I'm going to take care of my brother. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait, but it's on my time. Because I would hate to say it in this lax way of saying I'm in no rush, but he wasn't in any rush. But he was in a rush. Mm-hmm. Just so that they don't look, I mean, it's crazy, but it doesn't. It. So we, we, we look at it as there are two times that we're talking. There's a time to plant, and there's a time to reap. So he had a regular chronological time. We can say, I'll be there in 15 minutes. You know, or there is the reaping time, an opportune time for visitation when he's going to do something. And, and when we look at some of the scriptures that, that ties into that, uh, <laughs> this would always get you, uh, says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Huh? <laughs> Why are you praying and you still worrying? Why, why do we do, why do we go through things like that? But we are quick to do that. We'll start worrying and having our minds all wishy-washy because we are not waiting on the Lord. We are so tied down to see things that we see. We are tied and we see he's still sick. I need him here here right now. Like God couldn't allow him to be sick for another month and still come. But again, we know the story. Mm. He died. Lord have mercy. That messed up their whole... (laughs) How do you how do you handle that? How do you handle that? And then when Jesus shows up, we're not going to get too much into that. But but the pro- promise, there are principles that we have to look at when we talk about the promises of uh, the pro- pro- promise principle, excuse me, that we uh, should be viewing. So in, in our next slide, we'll see uh, that um, God's methods. Um, That's what it's saying. That God's method is different than mine. The way that we do things are different than the way God does things. We do things, uh, I guess, on, on our own timeline, on our own schedule. The way we, the way we've seen someone else do it, we do things in a on maybe sometimes not in a, a logical pattern or maybe it is a, a human logic way instead of uh, looking at how God is a miraculous God and he can do things systematically the way he wants. Well, we're out of system, out of the system when it really comes to God because he, he knows the order. We are out of order, but we think we are in order. <laughs> Our friend Lazarus sleepeth 
but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. These are so God works at, at a different method, at a different way than we do. So we have to really think about how we're going to actually uh, um, walk this walk in our life. It's kind of curious when he, well, I guess I, I, I think, of course, I, I'm getting lost in, in this time here, but when, when others came to him were sick and didn't have that person that was sick with them, he just, you know, trust me, you believe me, do you not doubt? He just spoke the word and when they got back, they found it like it is. But here, even though, like you said, everybody said, this is somebody you love, he didn't say that. He just said, it's not unto death. And then just sat down, not just sat down as if to do nothing, but then just stayed two days. So he could have like just spoke the word, but mm -hmm. that wasn't like you said, his time and all his agenda. Yeah, um, it, and, and let me throw this this one out there too, because I, I kind of leaped ahead a little bit with this as well, but yeah, God's, uh, his, uh, how should I put, put this? Um, his perspective on things is different than ours. Um, yeah from our vantage point is, is very limited by the humanity of things. And we, we can't see the future like you were talking a little bit about in your lesson a little bit. How can, yeah, if we could see the future, ha, ha, wow. And that's where I was talking about the, uh, the mind overload. I wouldn't be able to even capture all the things and all the steps that got me to my future. Uh, I would have jumped to the end and just tried to, and I, I could I wait for, for my end that where I'm gonna get the pot of gold? Could I, no, I want it, I'm gonna be like uh, the prodigals, I want mine now and hopefully I'm gonna yeah. steal the money at the end. But you could we wait to, to the success part? Could, can, you know, even going through uh, schools and colleges, we, we wish we didn't have to do four years. We wish, and you don't, if you're smart and you go ahead and get out and, and get it over with, but you, you wouldn't wanna go through all that process to get the degree. I don't need the English and all that stuff for what I'm majoring in, but they make me take that. They, you know, I was all of us went to school. I had to take swimming and I still can't swim. I, I, we had to do all those things, little, don't laugh, sis. But you, you know what I'm talking about. Those We had to do all kind of things to, to get a degree. And when you really think about, was it necessary? Well, that was a, well, there are things that are necessary even in our spiritual life that when we'll sit down and analyze it, is it necessary for me to go through all that? Did I have to sweat on the altar the way I did? Did I have to slop? No, you didn't. But that helped you get to a place. That helped you get to a problem. So, but our perspective is far different than, than him. And so this is where, where we were talking really here on this particular one uh, instead of uh, the method. But uh, I jumped ahead a little bit. But that's what uh, is so important from, my, from our vantage point. Uh, we, we look at it as a, in a human eyesight. And, and sometimes we miss the mark. Many times we miss the mark. So it, it's not frightening or perplexed. Uh, by he, that's God. He's not frightened by our, our situations or perplexed by. He's seen it all. You know that he's seen it. He knows exactly what he's doing and also what he is uh, uh, allowing to happen to us. Isn't that something amazing? We sitting here trying to figure it out, and he already mm -hmm. knows. He knows the answer. Mm -hmm. I know how I'm gonna do this, and we sit in a way saying, <laughs> "I'm sweating this out." And sometimes people even throw in the towel and give up. All right, but anything, any bad. So change that from my method because that was the next one, but this one to uh, perspective. And if there's something that you might want to add, even looking at these scriptures here. Uh, Pastor, I was going to add, um, as you were saying perspective, I was thinking um, it, it's a setup. I'm, uh, <laughs> Pastor Heath used to say that all the time. So I'm looking at going back to verse four, where he says what he says. Um, as Ms. Moran said, he, he puts that but in there, which erases the, the humanity part and then brings in the divine. Because mm -hmm. it's not about your brother. Mm -hmm. It's about my glory, the son of God to be glorified. Um, but after that, I see now he sets up the event. And it, so that the, so he can be glorified. He, he sets up. He doesn't leave when people expect him to leave. He even stays longer than you would expect. He stays 
it's, it's past four days. And I think uh, El Morant some years ago reminded us that after the third day in Jewish or Hebrew culture, that's when they knew you were dead, dead, because mm-hmm. they believed the soul hovered around your body for three days. But after the third day, it was over. Um, and so he stayed a fourth day, you know, to, to let everyone know, even in that culture, that he, Lazarus is for real dead. But it's a setup. <laughs> Uh, yeah no it, it, it's it, but it, and but he's doing it so you, you're right let's look at it also again i like the setup but it's just like um any any act any play that you have you have scene one scene one was the issue scene two is what you're what you're referring to right now as, as a setup. he's preparing them for the latter part of that scripture that, that we, were, we were talking about that he's doing it uh, for the son, the, the glory of God, uh, and then that Jesus might be glorified at the same time. So he's, he is laying out his, uh, his, his vision or his argument, I'll, I'll use it in that way, of why you should just trust me. <laughs> You're about to see something amazing. But do we, do we have the patience to do that, just to wait it out? Well, you have to if he tell if, if nothing happens, right? But how about how you go through? So we're talking about living the good life. And go back to our, one of our first sessions where we were talking about how we magnify, how we worship the Lord, that we don't wait till we get in, that when you are in a point, a place of worship, that you should be able to endure a whole lot of stuff because you know the Lord has your best interest at heart. So I'm going to magnify him regardless mm-hmm. as I go. Last week, we talked about not letting situations situations, circumstances dictate how we do things in our life outside of, I mean, when it comes to God, that we don't worry about uh, let uh, the circumstances dictate how we, we view things or judge things, I guess is a good word to use because we were looking at those words, uh, conviction and things of that nature. So we'll get tied down on, on the event to a point where it destroys us and make, and then we'll make that bad decisions because our attitudes are locked in on, on that which the world say, but God is telling you, don't look at that circumstances as a negative, but look mm-hmm. at how God's about to do something great in your downward hour, in your, even in the midst of all that we've gone through this year, all the pandemic, all the people that have passed away. This is bleak stuff. It, we were uh, many scary days. If you got this, you were thinking that you were going to die and you could, and you might, and you would that many have, mm-hmm. but through it all, God was working things. Look where we are today. Mm-hmm. Look where we are. How, how did you go through this journey? The good life tells you to bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. It also tells us to lean not to our own understanding. It tells us that all in all our ways acknowledge Him. God will give us direct, but we could have honed in and still be fighting, and many are over crate. But look how now the pandemic is really on the left side. Now gas has taken over the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we worry about now we worry about traveling we ain't worried about people getting sick no more we tra- i got no gas to go on vacation we have now changed our whole mind. but we get caught up on events like instead of watch god is working things out for even right now mm-hmm. working out things for us and we're still mm-hmm. focusing on the event he said get off of that Start thinking about the glory of God, how I'm going to, how this is going to, I'm going to do something marvelous in the lives of you and everyone else. It's going to blow your mind because you're not dead. Uh, Also, the miracle part was this. Remember when Jesus came to her, he said, he stinketh now. He been dead Mm -hmm. four days. Mm. That's why it was necessary for Jesus to rise on the third day because after the third day, the body see correction. Mm-hmm. But in this case, he was proven he was God before death and God after, after. death. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And time and place. Like I, I looked at G- where he said, he said afterward, after he said that, then he said, let's go to Judea again, which mm. they live in Judea. They lived in Bethany. And even though, and John said it wasn't that far, I think. I looked it up. It was like 1.7 miles or something away. That's a trip. But, but he didn't say I'm going to Bethany. He said I'm going to Judea. And that changed. So it's like God provokes us to a deeper understanding of what he wants 
And sometimes that means it is a delay because he's trying mm-hmm. to get to a place. So he delayed. And a matter of fact, they kind of changed the whole focus. Right? Ain't they trying to kill you over there? Why we want to go there? Mm-hmm. So, and even like you said, with the gas and the pandemic, I'll, 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 we kind of change and flow, these ebbs and flows according to what's going on. But he stayed certain, even though he said, you know, I'm going to Judea. And then afterwards, he even told them straight out, oh, he, he's dead. But they were like focusing, I think one of them said, what, um, let, let us go with him and die with him. Like yeah. folks, sometimes <laughs> we lose our focus <laughs> on even what the principal thing is. Because what God is pulling us to understand that, yes, is his his timing, his purpose, and his place. Mm-hmm. Minister, I was looking at that exact scripture um, in 16, because it was Thomas. And we always only <coughs> beat up yeah. on Thomas as doubting Thomas. But here he said, uh-huh. let's go and die with him then. Now that we got to relook at what Thomas is talking about or how our perspective of Thomas, because we only had that one perspective, but he, he, he says something heavy right there. I don't know if he really knew what he was saying, but he did say it. <laughs> so. Well, it is there for a reason, but uh, you're right. Uh, this, this, uh, this is opens up so much for us as we look at, uh, Again, looking at our overall theme of this particular, these lessons that we had of living a good life, how our minds have to be renewed, have to be changed to a point where we're trusting God unlimitedly, you know, without any uh, limits to how far we'll go with him. And when he gives us a word that we hold him, but it takes, it, it, again, it, the human part of us locks in on, on that and then uh, the, the luxury maybe in one way sometimes knowing the end is good but uh, as you study sometimes knowing the end makes you cheat and <laughs> yes sir okay uh so so we were dealing there uh dealing with the uh, uh second part of of the the principle uh, so this is um where we want to really make sure that we are not missing out um on what what's happening in the life of, of, of the persons or the people of God. In our next uh, slide, uh, this is where uh, the method, uh, God's method is different than mine, the things that he does. So John 11 and 30, that Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Uh, is that a, a method? How would you have uh, gone through this process? of they knew that that wasn't it resurrection wasn't a part of their mind at that point i don't know what they were thinking when jesus went to to speak the words lazarus come what how would you have take me to him what would you have been saying why you want to go there he did nobody else would have said anything like that no yes and i think they even said you know, what, what you want to do that for? By name, you stink. Yeah. So my method gets said, then he says, loose him, loose him, let him go. What, what, are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> so we, we see that he does things totally, totally different than impossible. the way he impossible. does the impossible, things that we can't even imagine. And if we trust him, there must be some reason why you always have to think positive that's why i say that word hope brings so much to be that i always uh, fall back on it because it, if god is in the midst of it and if he's doing something to take i don't think he needs to go sightsee he's doing something and he already told me he's going to do this for the glory of god that something is about to happen mm. so you have to have your mind your focus i'm gonna watch god he's about uh, I have hope. I got positive expectations that he's about to do something and it's going to blow the minds of people because again, he's trying to show the world, not just Mary and Martha. He's, he's showing all those because there were witnesses. They weren't the only ones there. There were others to see the power that the son of God had, the son that God had blessed. And I mean, he was working, going to be working miracles out 
through Christ and how these people's lives were going to be totally changed. And even us, because we had the book to read and we went through it. Now, how, after reading all that, seeing all that, how did it change your mind? Now, you know the whole story. What, what has it done for you? You've seen that happen. Where have you cut that short and given up? Mm -hmm. It got quiet on me again. But it, 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 it happens. We will throw in the towel instead of really trusting the Lord. Listen to the things he said. Get a word from the Lord. You remember, Sister Carolyn, Mother, Mother Temple used to always tell her, did you consult God? Did you pray? Did you pray? She would tell. She said she was going to England. You remember that story she told us? Uh -huh. She said, she said yeah. I'm going to England. She said the word came to her and said, did you consult God? I mean, just a trip. We go on a trip right now. We'll take a ride on a boat. We'll take a flight anywhere. Uh -huh. We do all the things. She said, he said, did you? She got, she didn't go on the trip now. Let me let you, let you know that. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. But, but she consulted God and he, evidently he told her no. Who knows what have happened because I still want to go. I want to see that Eiffel mm -hmm. Tower. I want to walk the streets of Jerusalem. I want mm -hmm. to, but did you consult? We, she was teaching us at an early age that we mm -hmm. had to consult God on not just some aspects of our life, but every aspect of our life. Now you, we say that's hard. No, she was saying when you had something to come up, talk to God. You know, we'll go mm -hmm. ask, we'll go ask people that we know that are on our side that uh, are pushing mm -hmm. us because we want the yes answer. We were probably uh, a unique body at, at way back because we had three uh, different elders, three different mm -hmm. viewpoints, and you knew which one to go mm -hmm. to when you, <laughs> when you wanted something. I'm just being honest. Yeah. We, we and people You're being very honest. And, and 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 people played on that. Now, you know, that that's, that's right. a, we were in a unique, unique environment. But today that, that same thing applies. Forget about it being the leaders of your church. We still go get right. advice from people where we feel that we're gonna get what I knew I wanted in the beginning, anyhow. Right. Uh, I don't get uh, a person where I'll get uh um, or they can, but most likely I'm I'm going to bring it to someone that may be biased my way instead of some other way, something like that. But she she always told us talk to God, consult Him, and uh, we see that it works. So the methods that He He uses, and I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you had something to say, Sister Carolyn? Were you going to speak? No, I was just saying. Um, she even um, we even knew who which one to go to when we want to confess something bad. Oh, definitely, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Isn't that something? We cheat. We cheat. We'll go to Ella Clark because Ella, Ella Clark, Clark beloved. beloved. Yes, sir. <laughs> beloved. Yes, sir. Beloved. Look, we joking about this, but that's how. That's it's the how, truth, though. It, it was truth. the way we and and it's uh, the enemy set us up like that. We let us do this because we got crazy. No, we, no. but, but was, that's not was. what God wants us to do. We should have no. been comfortable mm -hmm. to do, and, and so the pattern, the method is different again for each one of us. But the method for us to even do it within that body was already laid out. We mm -hmm. had an elder for the right. month, but mm -hmm. we would go. We mm -hmm. should have went to the elder for the month because God sent him there. That was his role. Right. But we would say, "I'm gonna go behind." How many of us go behind the closed doors and go to where I wanted to go? Where, I, but that's but it's it's so important that we. Note that God's methods for doing things is totally different than, and, and he uses this example in, in the uh, Lazarus and the Mary and Martha's experience, the family experience, by, by bringing them there, showing them, and from the human's point of view, we would even say, why? What is we doing? Because hey, look what, 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 what we see in uh, the grave. We see uh, from what you're saying here, Doc, they had that Jonah spirit. Had drew oh, don't worry about that, Pastor. Keep teaching. You can read that later. Don't don't even try. <laughs> but you're probably right. <laughs> um, but we do things know, no, off no, no. off kilter, and we upset the the whole spectrum of things. Look, here was a, a story that I, I found very fascinating about um, the um, the life. Uh, of a, um, a butterfly and how the butterfly 
is in a cocoon and is there for a purpose. It, it helps him just like the baby in the mom's womb, then the baby grows and oh, the, the butterfly is there. And uh, it, there are different things that happen as uh, he begins to grow and gets ready to bust out of the cocoon. Um, there's a time when maybe he's halfway out and his, um, his wings haven't really formed. Uh, this this uh, uh, author wrote a, a letter or a statement about how he observed how a man tried to intervene. He, he intervened and because he was watching it. He said, I'm going to watch this, this butterfly come out and see how his wings spread. And all. So he's looking. So the butterfly started and then it stopped. And, and so the man wondered, what, let me help him. You know how we'll try to help God. He said, let, let me mm -hmm. help the butterfly. So he mm -hmm. took a little tool and he cut the cocoon a little bit so that it could move a little bit. Well, when he did that, it, it stopped the fluids that the, uh, the butterfly needed to nurture his wings so that they could grow. And so what happened is the butterfly died because it didn't receive all those nutrients by steel. When he paused, when the butterfly paused, it was for a reason. It was for him to continue to get the vitamins and everything that he needed so that he could grow. Pardon? Sorry. So, so, so he, even going back to Dennis Morant's teaching us on little things. There are little things happening with little bugs that, and we intervene, or intervene in it and mess up the whole natural process because we have a different way of doing things. God's methods are not ours. We can't, we don't understand everything. So man, people split the little wing, I mean, the little cocoon open, the bug dry, it dried up and the bug died. That was mm. because you intervene. So we have to do things Leave some things you got to leave alone. Let God do it. If yeah. you're praying, why worry? That's what I try. I'm learning that one. Why mm -hmm. am I worrying? So it, the graveyard, they were closed. That's it. Their hands were bound, so they can't help. Their feet were bound, they can't walk. And, and then lastly, <laughs> we really have to get to a point where we can continue to show ourselves that we are not in a place where we don't lose out. That their feet were bound. Just think when your feet are tied up, what can you do? Wiggle your toes. Fall too. <laughs> you start trying to walk. So that last one is their face is bound and they can't see. Some things we can't see because our eyes are, are being blinded. Uh, so in our walk, in our lifestyle, in this living a good life, we have to allow ourselves to be in a position where we uh, grow or we, we, we strengthen ourselves by uh, not interfering with some of the things that God has already put in place for us and don't get too uh, overwhelmed and trying to do things on our, on our own natural way. His methods are different. His ways are different than ours. And we have to allow his ways to override our will and the things that we want to do. But uh, again, this, this particular uh, chapter that we were talking about, 11, uh, when I was going through it, it just blew up in my eyes and I began to see things because I was looking at how promises that God has placed upon us or have shared with us and given us how we interfere and, and it holds up the promise. But even when it holds it up, there's a purpose behind it is to help strengthen us, help us to grow, help us to, to become nurtured. Just like I was talking about the, the butterfly in the, uh, in the cocoon. It is a reason why we're in that, in that or he's in that basket. The reason why God takes us through obstacles in our life is only to help fortify you and grow. If everything was an easy walk, what would you think? How would you, we would be just like I said, we talked about the other in, in the ministry in the sermon about the prodigal son. We would blow everything we had. We wouldn't invest. Mm -hmm. How about the one with the talents? The one that covered them up, didn't even try to mm -hmm. do anything with. We, we would do things in an unorthodox way and in a way that God wants us to be able to, to grow and to work in the kingdom for such a time as this. And that means you have to do it his way. Don't, don't do it your way. Do it the, the way God has given us. And uh, to, to do that, you have to seek him and have to believe, trust his word, 
and get a deeper understanding of what God is saying. So this is living a good life. This is how we're going to be living the good life is really going, uh, looking at the box, working within the box, but at the same time, trusting how God has opened the box for us when he opens it and how we have to explore and do and look for ways to, to move forward. But it's all through the leadership and the guidance of the Lord. Um, he sent the children of uh, Israel, uh, Egypt out, I mean, Israel out when they crossed the Red Sea and they went out and they had to follow. They had the light by day and by, they had everything that they needed to make it to the promised land. But the promise was there. But there were some obstacles in their life. There were things that took, look at 40 years that was really a short trip. Isn't that amazing? Mm. 40. How many of us would have turned around? <laughs> They murmured, that's what, that's turning around. They murmured and complained for 40 years. I tell you, that's, that's mind boggling. But we are in a trip ourselves right now. And how long is it gonna take us to get out of Egypt? Because we, as a country, as a people, are, in, are going back in, in time. We're going back, well, the time was already there, but we haven't, <laughs> we haven't really looked at ways to experience success yet. So we got to trust the Lord and believe that God is working things out for our good. But any, any questions, anything that has been said, anything that you want to add to what I've displayed, showed you tonight on, uh, on this and um, we'll try to uh, speak to it. I thank everyone for their uh, comments and uh, input. Um, Pastor, I was, uh -huh. uh, uh, reminded of uh, what you were saying about the butterfly and what you also said about Israel, um, you know, being in the wilderness, uh, uh, Bishop Patterson, before he passed, was uh, talking about that gospel song, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. And he said, that's the mm -hmm. only way you could climb the mountain. You can't climb it on the <laughs> smooth, smooth side. side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to have something rough to, to yeah. move on up. You, you got to have it. You got to have some, they're going to be some obstacles, but they're there for your good. They're going to be some, some hills to climb. Where, yeah. But if, you're right. <laughs> Smooth side, all you do is slide. Well, they did that when I was pledging, you know, they put the, 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 uh, the uh, grease on the flagpole and mm. uh, our objective was to climb the, slide, the flagpole. So, you know, we're failing, right? And if you fail, you got hit. And um, I, you know, the pledging was crazy. But anyway, um, we, we do crazy things. We like that. It's just not, um, not a, we, we don't see the, the value in, in a lump. And, it, and it's there to help us. You know, it's there to help you. It strengthens you. Job, you think Job wanted to go through all he went through with his family? I mean, how, how many bad stories could come back uh, to a person uh, it, but it fortified it. It helped him. He says, if I die, <laughs> you got, you got to get to a point to you in your life where you know that it's the Lord that you're going to live for him, losing your children, your, your livestock, your, your wife is, is giving you a hard time and your friends have turned their back. They don't really understand you that you're going to say you're going to wait until your change come? What other change can come? You done lost everything in your head. But God is such a good God. It helped him. It strengthened him and helped Job a lot to, to grow from that. Uh, and the scriptures lets us know that he got uh, double for all those troubles. Um, but that was still a loss, you know, his family. Um, God is good. So uh, any, anybody else, anything else? Well, I was thinking about the struggle of, um, like you said, Martha, because she's the one that ran out to meet Jesus. And then he's telling her, you know, believe. And then he busts out and cry. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, he just did a little bit of everything. Now he's crying. Well, what's getting ready to happen? <laughs> Are you helping me, right? <laughs> <laughs> hang on to that struggle um because here he is not you know he hadn't got to last for love he haven't raised him yet he's telling him he's dead but just believe me and then he busts out crying 
Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, and that's that's uh, that's a, such a true statement. But you know, sometimes the only thing that sustains us uh, in our problems is knowing that God is with us and that He understands. Yeah. When you get to a point where you know that He understands, even if He He's saying I'm human, I I cry too, I weep. You know, He's the human part. He did all that, but uh, that 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 spiritual part of Him overrides all that. Uh, he he felt like he bled just like we did, uh, like we do. So yeah, but it would definitely you're looking to uh, be consoled, uh, console, you know, some type of consolation yourself, and you got somebody that's supposed to be helping you, and he's crying. But they wouldn't want me around because I'm a weeping person anyhow. But yeah, <laughs> I would agree with you on that one. That she had to say, "There's a what else are you man slap wanna slap him? Wake up, come on, wake up, Jesus, help me out." Because I'm in a quandary here, but it is something. Yeah. Any anyone else? All right. All right. Uh, go ahead. Let's uh, do the announcement.